should avoid it because it's almost hitting six o'clock. That's okay. If, if the video can be audio can be switched on. Uh, Prajit, just check. The Kerala Management Association was registered under the Travancore Cochin Literary, Scientific and Charitable Societies Registration Act in 1957. The association was soon affiliated to the All India Management Association, AIMA, New Delhi, and started functioning as its local resource center. KMA's objectives were well crafted right from the beginning. It was a journey with a purpose to build a strong business community through healthy interaction between corporate leaders and management gurus. This has helped many companies to surge ahead with sound professional management practices. A growing economy often ushers in new trends in the market. Regular seminars and interactive workshops are conducted by KMA to keep up with the ever-changing market requirements. A two-day annual management convention is conducted during the first quarter of every year, which is attended by over 1,000 delegates from all across Kerala. Eminent speakers of national and international repute lead this prestigious event. KMA's many successful initiatives are very popular among its members. Some such initiatives are Evening lectures by eminent people. CEO Conclave. Management Students Forum. Young Managers Forum. Sector Specific Seminars. Women Managers Forum. KMA is active in the social media networking sites and also has a comprehensive website www.kma.org.in. KMA is managed by a managing committee comprising of prominent. Happened? No, I think there is a issue because he is connected from home and some issues. No, okay, okay. You, you, you could disconnect that and go ahead, uh, Madhav. You could yeah, start I'll do it. Hi, Madhav. Good evening. Yes, sir. I think I think you know. Just mute everybody. Good evening. Welcome, sir. Uh, Mr. Joy Joseph. Uh, he is a CEO, Executive Director of Trichur Management Association. Welcome to the meeting, Raj Mohan Nair, Past President. Welcome to the meeting. Hi. Good evening, President and Program Committee Chair. Thank you. Start, sir. Dr. Good Can you just uh, good evening uh, and welcome to this 13th edition of the StartCon discussion series of KMA. Let us begin the session with a minute silence to pray to Almighty for all of us and for the whole world to stay safe and healthy in these challenging times of the pandemic. Continue to be seated wherever you are and close your eyes for a minute. Thank you and uh, good evening once again to our young guests of the evening, Mr. Shihab McNeil, founder and CEO of ShopDoc, and Ms. Neenu Rathim, founder and CEO of the Social Town, past president and program committee chair, Mr. S.R. Nair, past presidents, Mr. A.K. Nair, Mr. Rajmohan Nair, and those whom I cannot see on the screen, senior vice president, Ms. Nirmala Lili, Vice President, Mr. A. Balakrishnan, joins uh, Secretary, Mr. Jomon George, other managing committee members who are present here, members of KMA and other LMAs, students and invited guests. We just, uh, the screen is because Prajit is not there, I'm having a challenge on the screens here. Yeah. Sorry. Well, we have two startup entrepreneurs today who are different domain spaces and good to see that we have a really good attendance already today and I'm sure this will swell even further as we progress. Today's program as we you may know is in continuation of the new initiative conceived and taken forward this year under the leadership of our program committee chair and former president Mr. S. R. Nair which is a startup conversation series called the KMA StartCon series. In fact, one of the many new initiatives that we kickstarted in this KMA year 
to keep our activities relevant and useful to our members and uh, keep our members engaged, remain positive and provide with meaningful deliberations and events of utility. During these times of disruptions and uncertainties due to the pandemic and the related turmoil. Start count sessions, I'm sure, is one among the few such initiatives that played a key role in bringing <clears throat> All India Management Association's Best LMA Award and the Most Improved LMA of the Year Award to KMA this year. Here we introduce and present those new entrepreneurs who have ventured out to follow their passion and conviction and trying to make it big with their innovative ideas and concepts. It is important to hear their successes and what, uh, like what Mr. Ekinayas has said, more importantly, the tough path and the setbacks that they faced in their journeys and how they reached this current position of recognition, thereby securing an invitation to this KMA platform to address all of us now. Thus, StartCon series is a platform for these emerging businesses or entrepreneurs to showcase themselves and share their success stories with the delegates and members. And at the same time, get noticed by a wide range of accelerators and connects for their chances to scale up. The first of the StartCon series saw Mr. Sujit Bhaskaran of Gigs Board India and Ms. Fauzi Nizam of Cutie Pie Cakes. And the next one was with Mr. Joy Sebastian, who founded the award-winning online conference solution, We Console, and Mr. George Sakria, who founded X Travel Money. And the third one, we saw Mr. John Matthew, co-founder and CEO of Riafi Technologies Private Limited, and Mr. Jis George, co-founder and chairman of Transite Systems Private Limited. And the fourth event of StartCon series, we had two outstanding women entrepreneurs in Ms. Sonia Mohandas, co-founder and CEO of Wafer Chip Techno Solutions Private Limited, and Ms. Ganga Raj, co-founder and director, I Love Nine Months with us. And the fifth, we had Mr. John St. Matai, co-founder and CEO of the award-winning uh, startup IROF Technologies Private Limited, and Viknesh Kesi, co-founder and director of Asishta Research Private Limited, Trivandrum. And in June, we had the sixth start count session of the series with Ms. Devika Chandrasekharan and Mr. Devan Chandrasekharan, siblings, the co-founders of uh, Fuselage Innovations Private Limited coming under the spotlight. In August, we had the seventh in the series by two entrepreneurs who came up with innovative devices to combat the COVID-19 pandemic itself. Mr. Binu Augustin, co-founder of Heka Medicals India Private Limited, who developed the high-flow nasal cannula oxygen therapy device. And Mr. Sujit Surendran, co-founder of a Digital Transformation Private Limited, who had developed an UV light-based disinfection device for eliminating the now commonly on hospital acquired infection. In the eighth edition, we had Jyotis KS, co-founder Sapi Hair, and Alvin George, founder of VST Mobility Solutions. And then we had Mr. Abhi Krishna, co-founder and CEO of CareStat Enterprise Dental Software, and Mr. Ravindra Kamath, co-founder and CFO of Next Education India Private Limited. And the 10th StartCon event saw Dr. Bina Pierce, founder and CEO of Omics Gen Life Sciences Private Limited, and Mr. Sanjay Chako, co-founder and director of BCB Technologies Private Limited. The 11th session was having Mr. Sali K, co-founder and CEO of AppMaker, and Mr. Najib Bin Hanif, founder and CEO Zara Biotech, sharing the limelight. And recently, last month, the 12th in the series, we had Mr. Sherry Kurian, founder and CEO of Tutorcom, and Mr. Arun Babu, founder and CEO of Onions Fresh. Today, we have the 13th in the series now. Friends, Kerala has been witnessing a wave of such innovative entrepreneurial efforts from multiple startups. Startups in Kerala are stretching their limits as they focus more on the future technologies and finding solutions for problems in ways not experimented before. Success stories are written in all sectors, like the ones that we are going to hear today. The entrepreneurial wave witnessed in the state need to be showcased as it can provide valuable insights to the stakeholders of the ecosystem. As part of KMA's annual theme of spearheading responsible management, we feel it is KMA's duty to offer our treasure troves of expertise and professional experience, processed especially by our esteemed senior members to help nurture and mentor these startup entrepreneurs so that they are guided and helped to break out into the larger canvas of things and get the vision as well as the wherewithal to dream even big and achieve such ambitious goals to get into the bigger league. StartCon is one such exercise, but we have even more plans as we discussed earlier to help the startups by having the KMA Startup Forum 
being formed. This is an exclusive platform created by KMA to get the startup entrepreneurs together. And as I mentioned earlier, to make them interact, have meaningful deliberations and learnings, and also have the opportunity to meet up and network with corporate chieftains, mentors, investors, and funding institutions. A committee headed by our vice president, whom you saw now, Mr. A. Balakrishnan, who is also the executive director at Jyotit Financials and guided ably by our program committee chair and former president and renowned corporate mentor and startup guru, Mr. S. R. Nair is leading this initiative. An invitation is open to all startup ventures, be it private limited companies, LLPs, partnership firms registered with the Union Ministry of Commerce and Industry and Kerala Startup Mission as a startup entity within five years of its registration as a startup for a period of three years. A very nominal entrance fee of rupees 3,000 and annual subscription of rupees 2,000 is what we charge for that. So the KMA Startup Forum, in short, is to promote startup firms by providing mentoring, accelerating workshops, creating collaborative forums and provide opportunity to demonstrate products, services, innovation to the right people whom they need for their growth. But now it's time to turn the spotlights on to these youngsters and know more about their ways and creative innovations and how they reached this KMA stage to talk to us. We are indeed so glad to have you with us, Mr. Shihab, founder and CEO of ShopDoc, and Ms. Minu, founder and CEO of The Social Town, to share your story of evolution. <clears throat> on behalf of the managing committee and all present here, may I extend a hearty welcome to both of you, Shihab and Minu, to this 13th start con session of KMA. A warm welcome to all the past presidents present here, members of the Managing Committee and Executive Committee, Senior Vice President, Vice President, Secretary, members of KMA and other LMAs, student members, members of the media, and all invited guests to this startup conversation, which is about to begin. So now to start the session, let me invite our Program Committee Chair and former President, Mr. Saad Nair, to formally introduce the guests and engage them in a conversation, as well as moderate the Q&A after the talk. For those of you, if you still do not know SR well, he is a senior past president of KMA and is a renowned corporate mentor, business coach, author, blogger, and thinker who turned his focus to academia after a successful stint as an IT entrepreneur for many years. Thank you so much for the patient listening and over to SR to take over the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, President Madhav. Chairman of the session and president of KMA, uh, Madhav Chandran all past presidents, all executive council and managing council members, members of KMA, invitees, and also people, and also personalities who had come from other LMAs, such as uh, Joe Joseph, a great welcome to you. Uh, I'm just going to read out the resume of uh, these two uh, few personas, and then I shall engage uh, with them on the conversation. Uh, this, uh, uh, your, your, please keep your uh, 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 mobile or laptop muted so that you know we don't have any distraction on the way. At the same time, in case you have any questions, please put it on the chat board. I will pick it up from there, identify you, and then ask the questions on your behalf. Okay. Let me start with uh, the very, very brief uh, resume of uh, Shihab Makanil. Okay. He's a founder and CEO of uh, ShopDoc. Mr. Shahab McAneel graduated in electronics and mathematics from St. Aloysius College, uh, Mangalore, and started helping out his dad in business at the Sultanate of Oman. Later, he quit the family business and joined the corporate world, working in and working in, in, in leading senior management positions in companies, including McKinsey. Moving to entrepreneurship uh, and trying many ideas, Mr. Shahab McAneel built up ShopDoc a uh, healthcare technology startup with Kerala Startup Mission that has launched an application to address key position in healthcare, uh, in including inefficiencies in patient refer referral system and the ineffectiveness in doctor resource deployment. After the successful Jitex exhibition at Dubai during the last year, the end of last year, ShockDuck has managed to secure a, 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 a equity of uh, 10 crore from Dubai based. Uh, uh, investors. Welcome, Shiha. Let me now introduce uh, uh, Ninu Rathin. Okay. Uh, Ms. Ninu Rathin is the CEO of, uh, CEO of the Social Town. We, she calls it as TST, uh, Social Entrepreneurship uh, Startup. The Social Town is an online networking platform for, eminently, for community builders that intend to help those organizations who work, in, work to connect with services, volunteers, funds, and resources. The social town was envisioned by 
Ms. Ninu Ratin, a hardworking social innovator who has been working in community building and nonprofit sector since the year 2013. She's an electronic and communication engineer and an embedded system specialist and who had undergone management development program from IAM Koyako. Welcome to you, Nino. Okay. Nino, I will park you for a while. I'll start with Shihab and then I'll come to you. I think I, I seek your patience. Uh, Shihab, you know, yours is a, yours is a profile. Uh, sometimes we don't see in KSM, you know, because in KSM I had seen people who had come straight out of colleges, you know, motivated by some of those uh, uh, innovation and, and entrepreneurship development cells within the colleges and the, and, and the institutions. They come straight. Some of some people they come together and then form this up. But you, as a after your studies, had helped your dad in the business in Oman, and then you went into corporate uh, uh, experience. You worked in very leading blue chip enterprises, and then you came into entrepreneurship. Normally, when people start working in companies, you know the big fours and McKinsey and 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 the like, they generally get used to those atmosphere there, and you know they wanted to do that blue chip corporate, uh, you know the tie, shy, the coat, booted, suited, travel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what prompted you to come in? What motivated you to come into uh, come into uh, startup uh, now, Shahab? Will you be able to start with that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Mr. Sir Nayar and uh, Mr. Madhavan, Mr. A K Nayar, Nirmala, and uh, Mr. Balakrishnan, Jomon, Jojo, everyone. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh, you know, when I got a call from Mr. Sir Nair, uh, I could not first, uh, I mean, I was a little surprised. Uh, in fact, if you remember, if you recall, uh, one of the first persons uh, I met at Startup Mission when I applied for incubation, the person who interviewed me, uh, being the part of that uh, expert committee was Mr. Sir Nair. You're the only one person who asked me tough questions in that interview. Uh, and he allocated uh, uh, seats for us to catch him. Thank you very much. And it's great. And I, 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 I feel honored when you call me for that, this talk. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, something when you explain, uh, when you, when you uh, explain my brief uh, resume, there's a, one thing you missed out, which uh, most people, even close friends of mine, do not know about it. After my graduation, I spent a couple of years in NGOs and working in uh, grassroots level, okay, oh, yeah. Kerala, okay. Uh, uh, this has, uh, this now I have a huge impact in my life going mm. uh, forward. I mean, now how I uh, sort of envisioned all these things and uh, when I rediscovered my purpose in life, okay. <clears throat> my journey uh, uh, after my graduation, uh, uh, we, I worked with uh, multiple NGOs in Kerala. And even before my graduation, while I was in high school, that is when uh, the whole uh, democratic decentralization, all things happening. Even I, I, I took part in uh, surveys uh, going to door to door to determine uh, above poverty line, below poverty line. So uh, I was heavily involved in all these social activities. Okay. So I consider myself as a social entrepreneur. Okay. Um, uh, after uh, when I reached Oman, and I, I was supposed to go to my master's in business uh, in England, and I, that that did not happen for some personal reasons. And then I started helping out my father, who's been in Oman for almost forty years. Uh, he was into more traditional business. Uh, then I was actually kicked out by my father. The reason why is I was too lazy, and I was uh, I, I spend uh, most of my time reading stuff. Then I moved to Dubai and uh, I worked with multiple companies uh, specifically. Initially, it was in the luxury fashion industries. And then I moved to vision care and eye care industry, uh, the com uh, multiple companies, uh, even uh, the world's largest manufacturer of lenses uh, called Exotica. And, uh, and moved countries to countries. And I, I had a consulting team with McKenzie, and that is for a particular niche industry, I came to because. I knew that market and that particular industry closely because I spent in that industry well over a decade. Okay, uh, uh, then uh, coming back to uh, even before Shop Dog, I did try out multiple businesses, like four different businesses in different sectors and in different industries. And these things did not work well. And the, none of these were startups. It doesn't fit into that startup definition. So. Uh, 
And um, the, the last stint was in Australia and I was helping out. Uh, uh, I was working for a company, Lexotica, as part of a McKinsey assignment. I was in Australia for a sabbatical for my personal reasons. And then uh, I, uh, I found uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, like pensioners coming to uh, eye care clinics. And, and then I, I thought, why couldn't we get a mobile clinic, go to their houses in suburbs, get the eye tests done, dental uh, screenings done. Then uh, I partnered with a couple of Aussies and then uh, we built that concept. And then I had to come back to India uh, then I applied for uh, uh, incubation in Kerala Startup Mission, and I wanted to start this in my own uh, village and starting with. And prior to that, the six, uh, over six years, I've been heavily involved in charity, healthcare charity. I sort of uh, uh, co-founded, uh, I, I'm one of the directors and founding trustee of uh, healthcare charity, uh, uh, helping uh, patients, uh, kidney dialysis patients, giving free treatment. So I have that background and I have this vision care, I care background and the multiple business background. Well, let me tell you, let me be really honest. Uh, most of this experience did not really help me in a, in a way that I had to unlearn a lot of things. Okay. Coming from, coming from the corporate world and starting up and I, I, I had never worked in Kerala I had, uh, I, in, a, in a companies, any organization. Because even in India, anywhere in India, so coming back from uh, uh, Gulf countries or Western, uh, like Europe or Australia, coming to Kerala and starting up, it was really challenging in multiple aspects. First of all, I had to unlearn or a lot of things I learned during my corporate journey. So I, have, I had to become the completely new person. I had to reset my mind. And that is one thing. And to set up something here in Kerala, still not so friendly. And people still look at entrepreneurs, uh, you know, uh, someone who is here to loot, not to create uh, employment. That sense still there, but things changed a lot in the past uh, decade. But now a new gen startup founders and they're getting a lot of attention and they're getting mentored people like you and a lot of support systems being evolved and developed. So that's a great thing. Uh, the challenge was uh, to change myself, to to you know uh, to reset my whole thinking process, and to get used to get adjusted to familiarize with uh, many things in personal level, uh, even uh, family level. You know, people uh, look at me and say, "This why this guy is really mad. Why he gave up everything and started here? So he actually going back." Uh, but I have a beautiful vision and a great purpose in life. And that is the exactly the reason why I came back to Kerala and started up. The challenges, a lot of challenges, have gone through a lot of challenges, still facing challenges on a daily basis. Great. Uh, yeah. There are two, three elements that I have uh, really noted it down. One is that, you know, you said very beautifully that uh, rediscovering the purpose in life. That's a great thing, actually. Many people don't even discover their purpose in life. You are actually a person who had discovered and now rediscovering the purpose in life. So that is great, number one. Number two, you also said about learning, you know, unlearning. Okay. Now, after the unlearning starts the relearning. And when you start your relearning, you also see the challenges coming up. Okay. See, when we started, in my case, you know, there are many people. In fact, uh, I am talking in presence of uh, the former managing director of Kerala State Industrial Development Corporation, Mr. A.K. Nair. So they, once upon a time, those organizations were the great organization who had helped entrepreneurs and businessmen to set up businesses and establishment. Even today, Kerala State Industrial Development Corporation, KFC, etc., are helping people. But uh, I can tell you my experience when I started in the mid-90s, uh, mid, mid, mid okay, uh, as an entrepreneur, before that also I worked in Kerala as an executive for a computer company. See, the, there are three elements that I still remember. People, that is the denizens of the state, uh, the, the, the executives of the state, the, the people in general, look at an entrepreneur as a tax taking person, somebody who, who, somebody who actually does tax evasion. Okay, number one. Number two, somebody who exploit labor. 
Okay, number three, somebody, somebody who make obscene profit. So these are the three unwanted characteristics actually had been formed on. You must have seen in the movies until about 2000, most of the movies, the villains used to be entrepreneurs. I mean, Balan K. Nair, Tilak and A.T. Umar, you just name all of them. Every one of them used to be entrepreneurs. And uh, the hero used to be the Tolali Neda, you know, the, the union leader who will be working in the entrepreneur's office. And the heroine will be a, a Potti Pedna, that is the, the, the entrepreneur's daughter. Okay, that used to be the, 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 the trigonum of the movies of the exteriors. And life had changed a lot. If you really look at it, uh, particularly coming into this century, 21st century, a lot of changes. But for a person like you who had worked in the Euro, worked in the Australia and worked in the Middle East, etc., Things that could have happened in five seconds or five minutes, etc., can happen a, a hell of a lot of time. And still, a lot of rules, regulations, and systems, and pro not exactly systems and processes, sanctions and permissions. Earlier, it could be called as permission Raj or, or Inspector Raj, permission Raj, etc. It is only tapering off. Things have not come to its say. But I'm glad that you have actually rediscovered you wanted to come back to your own state and work. And then the charity element in you actually had given you this purpose of uh, helping people. You said about two things. One is about dialysis as a as, as an thing, and the other thing is the eye care, where you have actually involved in helping people and now uh, unlearning. So slowly, you I think I'm sure you will be actually getting into relearning. So tell us something about shop doc, please. So I mean, so that the audience here will understand what exactly it is. Okay, uh, shop doc is a healthcare platform. Okay, uh, in a single word, it's a healthcare platform. It's a healthcare application. What it does is, you know, you can also say ShopDoc is a platform of smart clinics. Okay. So, okay, when, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by smart clinic? It is a virtual primary care. Okay, it, it offers three-tier patient referral system. Basically, virtual primary care means it offers uh, virtual consultation uh, via video, voice, or phone or uh, even in-person consultation, we facilitate that. Uh, and then three-tier patient referral system is like, if someone goes to a primary doctor and a doctor uh, uh, inspects or screens that patient requires uh, a secondary or tertiary care. So the primary, secondary and tertiary care, we, we, we are building a platform in which uh, these processes can be streamlined and optimized and make it more efficient, at least five times more efficient than the existing uh, or, or manual system. And back in times, uh, India, you know, we have, uh, historically speaking, you know, we have legacy issues like uh, uh, we don't have a referral system like in the West, uh, mm -hmm. like any uh, developed economies. They have a, a proper referral system. Not everyone can directly go to a secondary care or hospital, multi-speciality hospitals. Uh, the person has to go through a general practitioner's first and that uh, has to be uh, you know uh, examined by the general practitioner then uh, then has to be referred to secondary or tertiary care the culture here is uh, more of the people uh, go to secondary care or tertiary care straight away this is a bad culture in in a, in a sense i tell you uh, in the last one year all those patients we have served uh, it's over 100000 and in which uh, we identified that only less than 15 percentage of these patients actually required to be admitted or required to be consulted or uh, to be referred to secondary care. But uh, since we don't have a proper referral system in place, not only in public, but also in private sector, uh, what happens is, uh, you know, now we have a multi-speciality hospital cultures. Everyone goes to multi-speciality hospital straight away and the people end up spending more than 35 30 percentage what they're supposed to pay for their primary care end up paying more so this is uh, having a lot of uh, multi-speciality hospital they have a uh, multi-speciality hospital density is pretty high in, as opposed to uh, 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 northern uh, states that is specific to care lies in the shihab that that yeah. what you see is specific to Kerala, this multi-speciality culture. But if you go to yeah. North India, Eastern India, many parts of Central India, etc., these these level of hospitals are not there, and there are primary centers and uh, maybe secondary level of hospitals. Yeah, that? we do have in government. We have a, a, a beautiful system like primary health center, community health center. This is there, but that is not as you know. Uh, 
I'm an advocate of public health care system. Like yeah. I love, you know, I love public transport, public health care system. There has to be a universal right. Yeah. Uh, 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 even though now I'm like, a, I talk like a capital person. I'm, I'm more of a social person. Okay. Okay. So the things which are not in place, right in place. Uh, so uh, one thing I, uh, people, my team members always ask, who is your best? Who is a competitor? I say I compete with the government. I compete with the Kerala Health Department because we want to, uh, uh, you know, push that. You know, this uh, three-tier patient referral system. Uh, I think uh, in 2012, Kerala government had sort of uh, uh, planned to implement, but it is too challenging. Then they dropped off. Uh, this is what I heard. So we we are trying to build a three-tier patient referral system parallelly and. Uh, I know, like a smart clinics in each village, each panjayat. There are 941 panjayats across Kerala. So each panjayat, uh, we're going to create a smart clinic. This smart clinic will offer virtual primary care, uh, a referral to secondary care, and uh, the practitioners, the doctors, can collaborate with each other and they can communicate. They can they can have their own forums. They can have their communication. And and the same uh, smart clinic can also sort of facilitate ambulatory care if the patients uh, to be transferred to secondary care. That coordination can uh, can be uh, done uh, more efficiently. And home care services, uh, if uh, the doctor needs to be, you know, like uh, back in times and, and when uh, the allopathy and all the medicines in the initial stages, so like the doctors go to this. Uh, Houses and uh, and these can uh, come back now. These are coming back now. So and but so. Uh, one second, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I I just interrupt you. I'm sorry for that. See, uh, I was actually thinking that the, the product that you have developed is something similar or something with a with a different USP as compared to Practo, Best Talk, etc. That's what I thought, which I realized it is not now. At the second time, I also realized that you have been you have been emphasizing on the social element rather than the capitalistic element of this as a as a great admirer of public health and public con con convenience, etc. Now, in this, uh, if you if you really look at it, one thing I've noticed, uh, Shihab, is that the brick and mortar element is high here. If you're saying that every panchayat is having a clinic and the new ambulatory services, all those things, then therefore the scalability actually come to some sort of a challenge. Don't you think so? Uh, there, there will be challenges, of course. Uh, one thing is uh, the, uh, the new emergence of new technologies. Actually, we are liberating these technologies, sort of uh, allowing, enabling these even physical entities and new digital entities to collaborate each other so that eventually. Uh, the beneficiary, I mean, the, the patient is the be, patient is the center of the whole ecosystem. We can deliver the best care and uh, as quickly as possible, uh, you know, as affordable as possible. We look at the prices, like for example, a patient goes to a primary clinic, a normal, uh, how much they spend, and we need to bring that cost down somehow. So because we're having a lot of uh, uh, influence this uh, multi-speciality culture. The prices are actually not going down; so it is going up, way up. So yeah. we can uh, uh, essentially we can bring this down if we use this technology uh, at the right place. For example, for the primary care is the the most important care. Okay, so we, we can cut the cost from there itself. We can if we can deliver the care and cure uh, at the primary care, almost eighty five percent of these can be absorbed at the primary care. Doesn't have to be transferred, the patient doesn't have to be transferred to secondary care. And uh, so we wanna uh, deliver the best care to the patients at the same time, bring down the cost, or we don't want that to go up beyond. Right, I understand the social entrepreneur yeah. aspect of that. I will come back to you, let me engage with Nino for a while. I'll come back to you because I have questions to ask you related to uh, related to the your, your, your number of clients that you have taken, your registrations and you're going ahead and the challenges, etc. Please uh, allow me some time to talk to Ninu uh, Shihab. Ninu, uh, welcome. Uh, I'm sorry that I kept, quite, uh, I kept you quiet for some time and uh, went uh, deeper into a conversation with uh, Shihab. You know, you are calling yourself a social entrepreneur. Your company is a Section 8 company. Okay, so you can't be necessarily making profit and divide, give dividends. So either you have to spend it out or you have to grow accordingly, put the money back to your company and grow accordingly. Okay, and uh, at the same time, you're an electronic engineer with embedded specialization. 
Now, all this put together, now, what is this fascination that you have acquired for the social entrepreneurship and how did this come about, uh, uh, Ninu? Please unmute, yeah. Please unmute. It is not that, ah, it is that. Yes. Okay, go ahead, yeah. Uh, good evening again, everyone. Uh, I'm truly humble and honored to be here. Uh, and back to the question. So, yes. Uh, so, uh, before going to the social town, I would like to give a brief idea about, you know, myself and why I landed up uh, building something called the social town. So, uh, during my, you know, young age or college days, I was very loud and active, but no one was there to guide me. I chose engineering only because it was a great deal because I wanted a professional degree, but I don't want to study long. So four years a professional degree, that was the deal. So I opted for engineering. No one to guide me or that was not really my, I mean, the technology was not really my passion. I I, I don't think I have any real aptitude at that time for technology, but I opted for uh, one of the best courses, electronics and communication engineering. And uh, I, uh, I was a very good student and loud and active so i secured uh, you know i uh, completed my engineering with honors and i was placed in an mnc at uh, third year itself so but uh, you know after completing my uh, program uh, that was a recession time and my joining date uh, postponed to you know uh, one year and i joined as a lecturer i started my career as a lecturer in the engineering college but uh, since I I didn't opt my uh, passion or that was not my passion and lecturing also didn't excited me because I am a person that I think uh, we need some kind of in industrial experience or you know um, the real practical experience to teach youngsters. After completing uh, seeing my enthusiasm, the college was kind enough to give offer me a job. Nidu, we want you here, and you can start right away. Even before uh, you know getting my certificate, I started uh, my lecturing career. Even teaching the final year students of BTEC. So, but I was not really happy with that because I can teach them because I can prepare well and teach them. But I, uh, but I honestly, you know, uh, can't go with that. Then I, then the only option was. Uh, in 2000, uh, 2008, 2009, so I can get married, so easily settled. So I got a good proposal, then uh, marriage happened, then I quit my job. And even my family was uh, happy because uh, uh, a good family, uh, well settled, then why don't you need to go for uh, you know, a job? So uh, at that age, I, I didn't realize the importance of you know career or doing something for your own or your social commitment. Then. Uh, so I settled for you know few months and I realized that I am not I was not really happy but not sure what to do and then I did uh, embedded system designing program that's a PG diploma program then again a lot of uh, things happened in my life uh, it was like a you know cinema story a lot of ha uh, things happened uh, with my with the business of my husband and we had to move to different places so uh, I didn't get any time to think about my career or anything. So, but I was a good homemaker and I always got a tag that, you know, a homely, sweet wife. I managed everything responsibly. So, but I was learning something throughout the journey and I had that fire in me. I wanted to do something and I, I was sure that I will do something when I get an opportunity. So, when in 2013, uh, when uh, finally we came back to Kerala, I wanted to do something, but I didn't have any experience. So, I was in 2008 pass out. Uh, so I was not sure about my uh, technical skills uh, and uh, so I wanted to do something. So volunteering was the best opportunity for me. I started with an organization in Kerala and I started volunteering. I have initiated my own projects. That gave me you know, confidence and my social circle started increasing. Then I realized that I wanted to do something in this field. But I didn't have any resources and I wanted to connect with a lot of other people in this space. But that was not really happening. So the NGOs in Kerala, that they were uh, doing something parallelly. I mean, many members will be there. Uh, apart from their job, they will engage in some social activities uh, or maybe some organizations. Uh, this is kind of a side activity. But, but I wanted the social activity to be seriously taken and executed like a corporate activity in a you know, very efficient manner. But, uh, you know, I wanted to change but I didn't have resources. Then I continued volunteering and when in 2018, I uh, came to Kwechi uh, 
and I got some really good project and I connected with really good people and I was a volunteer in uh, Compassionate Kerala during the floods and 4,000 to 7,000 volunteers were part of the uh, you know flood management system and uh, we were literally strangers but we worked together and did something massively so I realized that okay now uh, I can connect with people virtually so Again, I started, uh, you know, thinking about uh, building the platform. Then after that, I got an opportunity to work with Chekuti. The, the, from the first day of that project, viral project, I was a part of that. I took the responsibility as a volunteer, I took the responsibility as a core team member and the project coordinator for that. And six months, I continuously worked that for that. The project started by Lakshmi Menon, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. And, and after that six months, uh, she offered me a job in her uh, uh, foundation itself then I was working as a project consultant and in 2020 finally COVID hit and uh, we have many activities and now I thought oh, it's a time to start working uh, and I started slowly uh, building uh, brick by brick the social town and I applied for the I was doing I, I also applied for the uh, executive management development program from uh, I am Cory Code. Many of my friends are, you are doing volunteering, you are doing social activities. Why do you need a, a you know, a, a project management uh, uh, specialization from a premier institute? But our life itself is a project. And especially when I'm doing social project, it requires all the skills and resources and the efficiency as any other department in the social development sector also. So I'm, I was very proud and uh, I, I completed that. I was only one person from the social uh, sector for that course. And the, by the, the time the, I complete that course, the solution, the solution, so the social town. When mm -hmm. was it incorporated? When was the company incorporated? You know, in October 2020. 2020. The platform yes. is ready. Platform is uh, MVP is ready, and we are converting it to a full-fledged platform now. When I went through your website, as I, I seen a lot of uh, snaps of uh, employees or your staff or associates, etc. What do they do? So actually, the social town is a platform for community builders and change makers. So we are developing a multi-stakeholder platform for NGOs, okay. NPOs, volunteers, and corporates to come together and congregate for better social engineering. What do we mean by that is uh, I have a perfect example here now. As Shigab said, uh, he rediscovered his uh, you know purpose or the backbone of his you know change in life is because of his. Uh, engagement with the uh, grassroots level organization i want to give that opportunity to each and every youngster in this country because india is the largest youth population in the world and we have 3.3 million ngos in india and 2 million social enterprises and 640 plus social startups and increasing at a you know large pace but they don't have to, if they are working properly we have you know millions of organizations but that means for every 400 person there is one ngo if okay. they are efficiently me, working, are the work? yeah, I get the point. But tell me, what are the what are the uh, what are the activities that you had done in the social sector so far? You know, for the audience to understand. Yes. So, uh, before the social town or after the social town? After the social town, I am talking okay. entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. okay. So. Uh, so I have incorporated my company in October 2022 and by the time I was also incubated, at, uh, I was uh, selected for the Women's Startup Program by Indian Institute of Management Bangalore. We are currently, it was a three level selection process and currently we are incubated at Indian Institute of Management Bangalore okay. and uh, yes. And uh, so after uh, start uh, incorporated in October 2022, it was just an idea and I was started building a, a platform but as I mentioned before, I didn't have any uh, so much of you know technology experience so I hired someone and I started building the platform but uh, that uh, that person messed up and I know my skills because I have worked with a lot of volunteers my skill is a uh, community building I have uh, managed a lot of volunteers in the past so I started building community so now we have around 2000 plus people in the uh, social town they were NGOs, NPOs, social entrepreneurs, volunteers uh, from different parts of India and uh, some from abroad also mainly from Nigeria. So we have conducted learning programs, we have conducted four international conferences, we bring together people, we discuss ideas, we yeah. share. Let me ask you, I just want to get a comparison. I have been, we have seen in fact Nirmala and others, you know, we have actually worked closer with, a com with an organization called Goonj. You know, during yes. the flood time they were also here. Yes. If you compare your organization with respect to Goonj, where are you? Oh, no, very, very beginning. So I have uh, uh, gone to, I mean, 
they were like legends but i am starting i am building a community i am here to help organizations uh, like gund maybe to mobilize more people okay Techno only technology can do that i am building a platform for anyone interested in social change to join so that okay. if there is any disruption happens or any calamities we can bring together resources immediately that will okay. happen yours is a section 8 company that i understand but there yes. is there should be a business model and there should be a revenue model as well so yes. where will you get your revenue from ninu so uh, through the subscriptions paid memberships okay. and for the education programs and we also do events so through sponsorships and donations so i just can... heard that you did some program at kerala startup mission will you explain that let us understand what you are yes. doing there Yeah. So I'm always interested to work with young uh, young people because I have a volunteering background, and yeah. I wanted to bring more awareness about sustainable development goals and social entrepreneurship. Among so my idea is to you know encourage more youth to engage in act social activities and make them social entrepreneurs, be it uh, social entrepreneurs or let them you know rediscover or. discover their purpose as uh, she have said so i am encouraging the youth to come forward and work with, during their college or study time itself they can volunteer with any of the organizations and my deal is i will offer them in you know, a recognitions and rewards so they can build their profile as well while studying is there any organization that comes to you telling that i have csr money available please advise me how to spend it uh not yet <laughs> because my idea of csr uh, you know when this i want to bring a culture of micro csr right right yeah because yeah. many organizations many big organization has csr funds but they also have a, a you know a long or lengthy uh, you know process many right. of the small or grassroots level organization does not have the resources or the competency to get those grants or funds so i want to make this a lean process i want to give an equal opportunity to all organizations so in my platform everyone can have a profile they can uh, update their activities they can have their you know credits or uh, you know their okay. uh, everything can be available so 2000 yes. people who are registered with you all of them are active in your in your platform no not uh, not uh, we are engaging them in different ways so okay. we are communicating them with uh, you know different uh, Base. Yes. Okay. Right. You know, I'll come back to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it is so, 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 so interesting to talk to you about uh, social enterprise and your experience thereof. And we'll come back to you to talk to you further. I think uh, uh, we in Kerala, though we have uh, lots of NGOs, typically, you know, social enterprises uh, have not been there much. So uh, we will need to understand more about it. Let me go back to Shihab. Now, Shihab. So you said uh, sometime in the conversation, you said a uh, hundred thousand. Uh, patients or a uh, hundred thousand registrants or something like that. I heard. Will you be able to tell me your 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 current uh, uh, number of registrants or number of people whom you are serving right now through your platform? Okay, so we are serving. We have got three types of different uses. Okay. Uh, let's say we have th three types of customers. Okay. So we have three P's. One is the practices like hospitals, clinics, mm -hmm. labs. The second is practitioners. Different. specialty doctors any types of medical practitioners and the third is patients okay In the first year of our operation we focus more on bringing all these healthcare providers okay. both practitioners and practitioners onto our platform mm -hmm. uh in that uh, we've been fairly successful uh, we brought uh, on board more, more than 200 plus uh, hospitals and clinics mm -hmm. and 3500 plus uh, uh medical practitioners okay. from various hospitals across kerala and a few hospitals in mangalore which is because quite adjacent to kasaragod that's where I'm actually from i'm actually uh, belonging to that part of kerala okay and a few hospitals in chennai so even though we have got a partnership deal with the 22 hospitals uh, Uh, of manipal group yeah we have an onboard all of them the reason why we said our focus is kerala initially in the first couple of years we're going to focus kerala we doing it the best way we can so we'll onboard them later stages and when it comes to number of patients okay we have served over 100000 patients okay okay what your what your business model uh, shahab will you please okay. give us a idea about your business model okay. we we've, we've got multiple business models like the revenue channels uh, yeah. the, the first and foremost uh, subscription software as a subscriptions for uh, 
to bringing all these practitioners and the practices on board uh, as a, a small premium uh, charge to these practices and practitioners. We give them uh, some digital services and they can optimize their uh, uh, resources in a more efficiently, more effectively. Yeah. And the second is uh, that monetization hasn't been started yet. Uh, each consultation, each referral or some sort of fees and Going forward, uh, we are setting up a distribution network across uh, Kerala, starting with where we can uh, facilitate ambulatory services, home care services, and hyper-localized medicine distribution. And from there also, that is a sales channel. Uh, that is a third uh, front of uh, front of uh, our revenue channel. Yeah, so have, when I when I hear you uh, talking about practices and practitioners. Uh, in terms of 200 plus hospitals and 3,500 medical practitioners, etc. In some way, it uh, it resembles the the model that uh, Practo, Bestock, etc. How different are you from them? Okay, I'll tell you. There are, of course, there are some overlaps, but not entirely. The our go-to-market strategy and how we function. Even we we have innovated. We have sort of try to differentiate as much as possible, yeah. and how our business is run. And in uh, specifically. We are creating, uh, all these hospitals are each individual uh, smart team. Okay. And we will enable these practices to collaborate and communicate each other. So are they fresh, smart clinics or what is it? I mean, you're... you're okay. Okay. If you look at our application or website, you will see 200 plus hospitals yes. or clinics. Each yes. one, we say a smart clinic. Okay. Okay. And these smart clinics, uh, majority of them, out of 200 plus, majority of them have a physical brick and mortar entity. Yep. Okay. And there are some smart clinics which do not ex which do not have any physical presence at all. Okay. okay. So let's say uh, one of the most popular uh, uh, smart clinics on our platform, where most of the users, uh, patients are seeking services, are you okay? It's a mental health clinic. Mm. It doesn't have a physical presence. Yeah. But it only has a presence on our app. Yeah. Okay. It is 100% virtual, not a hybrid. So, and we need to talk about mental health, by the way. It is uh, that's a, that's a very, interesting, data, very interesting proposition. Like yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting proposition because it's mental health that you have said. It's a very interesting proposition. Now, I just want to know from you, from your, from your feedback, not the numbers, are people approaching you for mental health assistance? Yeah. Of course, it is uh, an alarming numbers because okay. we initially the U uh, the uh, the U OK smart clinic on our platform. It's a virtual mental health clinic on our platform. It wasn't a smart clinic at first place. Okay. We started as a, a, a mental health awareness campaign during second wave. Okay. So it was a campaign, and it was initially targeting only uh, young uh, population like schools and colleges. Yeah. And uh, particularly women to help yeah. them out to cope with uh, all all the issues, and and we started webinars. Uh, we conducted some workshop, and we got uh, enormous amount of response, especially from Generation Z, the, the Instagram uh, using uh, generation. Yeah. And then we decided to open a smart clinic of our platform. And let me tell you something interesting. Yeah. Uh, around sixty-two percentage of our patient interaction transaction come through this virtual mental health clinic. So, and uh, the alarming number of people who are seeking mental health services, uh, it is a great thing to worry about. The thing is... I have a question yeah. here, Shab. Yeah. Uh, uh, th that is because the mental health aspect that you have said. So from, I have been also been a watcher of the scene and as a, as a social watcher, uh, but then... Uh, I just want to find out a distinction between the mental health aberration that people have had during the COVID time and the pre-COVID time. So do you see most of the mental health cases coming due to COVID cases or even otherwise? Honestly, I didn't know what happened before that. I'm new to this particular domain. But one thing I can tell you, in my own personal experience and the people I know close, all these people already have had some mental health issues which they did not realize at first place. The yeah. communication, uh, the awareness was almost minimal. Nowadays, a lot of communication going out, uh, the awareness campaign is going on. And plus, the COVID has accelerated or increased the number of people who suffered, especially from loneliness and yeah. other issues. 
uh, now they, uh, they get to, they understand, they've been informed that this is something related to your mental health issue. Should be really, really uh, worried about, I mean, should be really taken care of. Yeah. So the awareness is more nowadays. So I have, yeah, I have yet another yeah. doubt, which you said you had actually set up about 200 plus hospitals and you refer to them as smart clinics. So this is not the typical private hospitals or the other hospitals who are registering with you, are they? Yeah, even the, some of the smart clinics are operated by some of the leading hospital players uh, uh, from the state. Okay. Okay. Uh, the thing is, uh, we sort of uh, uh, filter and we sort of, if a patient comes to us, we really sort of identify whether this person needs to be referred to a secondary care or not. Okay. okay. We are building a more technology on top of it. We are enhancing our product in, in a way that uh, all this uh, screening process should be more efficient and uh, the referral process can be uh, more beneficial to the patients. One more question. Uh, are you or your, your practice, you're also getting into telemedicine aspects? Yeah, this our platform offers telemedicine. So okay. virtual care, virtual video consultation, uh, phone consultation. And uh, see, this smartly offers a video consultation, a referral, secondary opi uh, second opinion, uh, other uh, coordination, coordinations with the secondary care and all sort of things. Uh, Shiha, today, most of the patients as well as the ecosystem is largely dependent upon the diagnostics laboratories and, and, the, and the radiology laboratories, etc., etc., that has mushroomed across the state in plenty. So are they also part of your system or how do they get, how do they integrate them into your... your, your, yeah, your currently, we have platform? 21 uh, laboratory chains on our platform. Okay. And uh, we, initially, uh, we've been to uh, the market uh, not much. I mean, it's just uh, 14 months now. We already got the 21 lab chains on, on board with us. Okay. And uh, there are uh, more technology tools to be built, uh, sort of uh, to facilitate uh, the diagnostic part of it, uh, the diagnosis side of it. Uh, uh, and we also offer uh, uh, more than 200 plus health packages, like diagnostic packages. Okay. You yeah. offer that as, yes, a part of, offer. As, a, as a part of your, your offering to the Okay. Yes, offering to the patients. Okay. And uh, when we get these inquiries, we sort of match who can give the best at the most affordable rates. So the pricing factor, uh, you know, we need to give the best deal for the patients. So, uh, so the, we look at the pricing, the cost of the healthcare. Understand. Uh, obviously, that means you have come to the revenues, but you may not have come to profitability at all. Now, uh, will you tell us something about uh, the, the, the revenue that is coming by and the growth that is happening thereof? Plus, okay, let us get an answer here, then I'll come to the next one. Yeah. Okay, the revenue part uh, initially was from the subscription. Yeah. And uh, the other part, we haven't started monetizing it at all. Yeah. So, uh, uh, we, uh, see, uh, we're not charging anything for patients for any service fee, anything at all. So the, the, the single and only revenue part is coming from the subscription software as a service to these practices and yeah. practitioners. Right. Okay. Now it is heard and we read that uh, you have been offered some equity partnership by some of the investors. So how do you want to use, the, has the fund come? How do you want to use this fund? She has? Okay. That fund, that uh, we did not go for a fundraising to Dubai at all. Uh, initially, uh, we were selected to be uh, uh, representing Kerala Startup Mission as one of the startups. There were 16 or 18 old startups went to Jitex uh, and participated. Uh, we were luckily one of them. Yeah. And uh, the initial response we got from the medias there, the people, especially the expatriate business communities. Yeah. And then we got uh, uh, funding offers and uh, the specific requirement for that funding, uh, the condition was to set up a different entity in in the in Dubai and uh, expand this to across the Middle East, so we are capitalizing to expand this. Uh, the initially, the uh, we did not take any external funding for Shop Talk, our our entity in India, and we still haven't uh, start fundraising for Shop Talk India. The fund we are going to utilize for Shop Talk Middle East, okay, the uh, expansion day. What is the size of your team, Shihab, now? Uh, now, 18 to full-time team members, and we have some uh, interns as well as some uh, part-timers. And the interesting numbers uh, uh, of this uh, seven, uh, uh, 60, more than 60 percentage, 65 percentage are women, 
and more than 70 percentage of our team members shop talk is of their first ever job and uh, okay and uh, we, we are innovating the way we run business uh, now we're innovating the how the processes things and we don't have any cv screening anything at all hiring is uh, different because if anybody wants to join they need to talk to me they need to write to us how can they make shop talk better how can they help the patients so we don't look at any CVs or CVs, their qualifications. We just do the cultural fit test and uh, they are in. And uh, we are hiring, a, a, we, we're going to hire a lot of team members in the coming months because we need to expand Middle East because the business, uh, a Middle East business model completely different, a different product. We're building the whole new technology, all new platform, all new apps and a different business model and different market. So we're building the whole new team for Middle East. The fund is going to be used, utilized for that. The, the entity in India, Kerala, we have a different models where that is all that, that is, and where we're going to hire 2,000 women, uh, uh, like uh, women from Kerala in the next couple of years to yeah, roll you, out. You this. are currently concentrating completely on Kerala. So is your model very Kerala centric? Or you want to go across the nation, across the world? Yeah, we want to go across the nation, but we need to prove ourselves first in our home state. If we can't prove ourselves in our home state, there's no point because Kerala has a, some advantage as opposed to northern states. We've got our social fabric, our social culture, and how the Kudumbashri. Yeah, but the, the, but the difference that you have is that you may take a model out of Kerala, but uh, of course, you said about Kudumbashri, three tier, PHCs, etc., etc which is not the model that runs in elsewhere in the country. So you may still have to fine tune your model to suit them. You know, will that yeah, work yeah, in yeah. Your... Of course, of course. See, not necessarily everything, but we can sort of replicate the uh, majority of that. Uh, I mean, okay. uh, the core concept can be replicated, but there has to be some compromise, some adjustment to be made uh, when we expand across other states of India. Yeah. I have some more questions for you. I'll come back. You know, so you are, uh, so yeah, you were telling that you'd like to explain this uh, this this the social entrepreneurship aspect a little. So what is that you wanted to talk about that? Please go ahead. Yeah, but understand that brevity is the soul of the discussion. Yeah, go ahead. You know, you have to you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yes, sir. I was not allowed to unmute. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, I was okay. trying. Yeah. So, uh, can you repeat that? I was trying to admit. I was so because you, you said that you would like to speak something about the social uh, uh, social entrepreneurship aspect a little. Okay. So I yes. said okay. In case you want to speak, you speak. But yes. I want to remind you, brevity being the soul of the whole discussion section. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So yes, uh, I would like to know. Uh, someone was asking what actually the social town is. The vision of the social town is to uh, build a community of change makers to bring them and give them a platform. We are not directly doing it. Okay. We are actually bringing people together and connecting them and uh, we are giving them a direct and indirect network opportunities so they can, for an example, so if an organization in Kerala, so they yeah. have developed a syllabus for a tribal community here, okay. so uh, developed a curriculum for a tribal community here. So if an organization in Maharashtra want to do something similar in other, other tribal community, uh, we can connect with some volunteers can translate it, they don't need to reinvent the whole wheel. We are uh, multiplying the impact. So considering the current social situation, we know that we need all kind of people to solve the social problems. We need innovators, we need technologists, we need all kind of people. Yes. So I'm providing them a platform. So nowadays corporates, they have, uh, you know, uh, employee engagement programs. So that is my main target. Uh, they have their own programs, but I'm giving the uh, corporate employees the flexibility to choose according to their interests. So in my platform, when they create a profile, they can choose their interest areas of courses and they can also give their skill set and they can also set their availability, whether they are available physical or online. So they can calculate the you know number of hours they are contributing towards that particular course. But the advantage of that particular corporate company is if they have 1000 employees and 100 employees volunteering here and 10 employees are contributing. So 1000 hours per month. So that multiplied by 12 will be their social return of investment at the end of the year, they can convert. Okay. So this is the flexibility I'm giving up. For the uh, volunteers also, I'm giving the same opportunity. So if they want to go uh, apply for a job or even want to go abroad for any kind of fellowship program, they have a credible profile of their volunteering activity. 
so that will appreciate uh, you know by any company so i want them to you know uh, yes for the social town as it is is it being accredited by other organization for the purpose of you know you proposing the volunteers to them uh so actually we are getting some you know it, uh, we are seeing some interest from other corporates like even microsoft india they we had uh, we had a conversation with him they are actually interested uh, to come up we have connected some organization with them we have already uh, working with cognizant they have some programs and what we are doing is they have programs their foundations have programs and they need a channel to connect with uh, you know grassroots level organizations so we act as a bridge these small organization they don't have the competency or they, they will not be able to approach cognizant or microsoft directly so but we can act as a channel so we can facilitate their meeting and connect with them so it's a win win for both of them absolutely i am just taking a case study of Cogn i am being cognizant and coming to nito telling nino telling that yes we we would like to have some other people doing the program and you say that okay i will give the opportunity to do so so but yes. where is it that you make money in the process uh when you register in my platform you have to pay me membership fees uh, fees so, yes. so, so is it a corporate membership or is it individual membership that you take uh, uh, uh it volunteers will not have membership fee but corporates will have and the nominal amount for the ngo set up now we are providing a freemium model because we want to establish the uh, uh, platform is getting developed so we have an mvp model as i have challenges personally I have challenges to develop the platform but luckily now we are selected by the force for good program by uh, jp morgan and chase really? their volunteer they what develop the platform for us they will convert our mvp to the uh, you know uh, for full pledge product so you have come to some marquee league you know you are saying about companies in microsoft uh, james you know all those companies so suddenly i am a solo founder trying to do something and i will just go and talk to them this is what i so uh, when people ask me uh, for my uh, you know uh, international conferences there were people from uh, un united nations the directors of you know un impact and people like that how do you manage to get them you know so you may have some godfathers or people nothing so i have a a, a normal linkedin account i'll message them so i'm nino rathin so i'm the founder of this company this is my intention i want to do this this is what i'm trying to do i want you know if you can spare some time with us and you know share your knowledge or expertise or your short story and enrich my people i'll be grateful for that Great. we have me. a person we have a person among us you know whose name is rajmohan nair he is very famous for asking Okay. He, he will ask. He can ask anything. You know. okay. Similar to that, I think you are also on LinkedIn. You ask. Is that what you do? Yes, sir. Because I am doing for a you know purpose. I am not you know doing just uh, for me. I am doing for for a purpose. So I don't mind asking them. And okay. uh, what yes. is it that gives you maximum happiness when you do all these things? I understand you have completely changed your orientation, profile, etc. Everything into you no know, volunteering, helping, social engineering, social profile, all those things. what is the what gives you the maximum happiness nino uh, seeing the change sir seeing the change so what is the change that you are looking at you know the world is going from the uh, you know it is globalization to nationalization what change is that you are looking at there no i want you know uh, i am happy with even small changes you know okay. even i go to my mentors and even if a small project i will happily you know tell them sir you know i am going to do this uh, you know maybe it may impact on very few people but i am very happy So it's every has me. I mean, no, no, this is a very general yes. answer that you give. What, 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 what will give make you happy? What change are you expecting to happen? You know, it is. No, I want to give. Uh, okay, I want to give equal opportunity or growth opportunity for it, all impact organizations, and okay. I want the youth. to be i want to be an, uh, an advocate of volunteering because i have i'm sitting here only because of my volunteering experience i want to give that opportunity to each and every be it an engineer be it a doctor be it an architect i don't mind that but you know you, do you want to build your profile so do you want to you know realize your purpose then do community activities i will recognize you i will give you rewards very good thank you so now i will come back to you know we are on the last stages of our, our, our discussion uh, she have what are the difficulties that you come across you know because if for a person who had worked in such a, such ecosystem where things used to be much easier and practical you must have had some trouble here that is one second thing in the building up of this enterprise that you have uh, shop dog what are the difficulties and challenges that you have faced okay uh, the first of all let me tell you one thing uh, interesting uh, uh, see the the first and uh, the, the 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 biggest challenge i faced to convince my own family members why okay. i am back Yeah, that is right. Yes. 
that's the biggest and challenge then, i understand yes uh, then uh, uh, sort of to answer the people who ask me tough questions why i'm back and the and logistical issues and transportation issues in kerala i mean i'm from kasaragod i need to get to trivandrum for certain things for chin you know it takes for example half a day the whole day to get things done this is very slow here uh, i was really annoyed and going to the government offices uh, for different paperwork and it still take time and even people uh, when we go to them and uh, see we are uh, like a sort of a begging for their mercy and this is still there but since now we have kerala startup mission uh, so and when the government has a new mandate and glamorized to solve the startup ecosystem and the founders the things change a lot no, no, i understand glamorizing startup is very much there but the the bureaucracy and and the people who are supposed to be sanctioning and moving papers they still live in the old world has yeah. it ever felt you that ed guligan nu neerta ivide varan thonni adu thonni illa yeah i see uh, in the west or uh, in the middle east especially in dubai where i spent uh, more than 10 years and where we go to a government offices we we welcomed they make things faster and the all the process and procedures are friendly to the investor or business uh, people and here things are not as great as this and but uh, we are changing uh, evolving and uh, other than, uh, besides these challenges i have some other challenges especially when building product building mm-hmm. platform mm-hmm. and finding the right talent mm-hmm. is also uh, has been extremely challenging because we yeah, got a lot of hold on, hold on hold on are you saying that to get good talent particularly technology talent in kerala is tough yes it, it is tough yeah it is tough okay there are a lot of engineers but the number of quality engineers are lesser because uh, these engineers are not employable these engineers are good uh, really good with their uh, marks and stuff and, uh, and 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 one thing is uh, the engineers these all engineers aspire to go to some multinationals they they they, they want to have a very secure job yeah someone who offers like a startup job or oh, a lot of uncertainty how how long the startup will last uh, whether our future is because you know working in a startup completely in an uncertain world and it is not easy to attract great talents in an early stage now we are in a stage uh, that people come to us we cannot we get a daily sort of request uh, uh, and applications requests as any jobs but still quality engineers is a big difference between an ordinary engineer and a quality engineers and this highly employable engineer who can fit in into a uh, startup system a startup culture is still really hard because we don't have the ecosystem as advanced as bangalore or chennai sorry uh, hyderabad uh, or delhi gurgaon we we still you know our kerala startup ecosystem still in its infant stage and attracting the right talent the, 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 the some of the best engineers who work in bangalore or from kerala but they don't want to stay here understand they, bangalore offers a different lifestyle altogether so they get the social life the social aspect around also is not, yeah. not that good that is what you're saying so yeah. first element that you said is their their competencies and knowledge and practicalities are not that good second you're saying that many people who are there outside but they don't want to come back to this particular very boring monotonous uh, sort of a social backup uh, that the social system that we have around us right okay yeah, yeah. by 2025 we, we, what do you envisage as to where will shop doc be uh shopra is going to be the world's largest platform for smart clinics and uh, touching a billion plus people's life impacting you no know, helping them to achieve a healthier and happier life great great that is very good so you know so we are we are almost at about 7 12 now normally we used to wind up at about 7 7 10 we have actually extended it to this far tell me so you have a, you see it's a it's a very pleasant and very interesting experience to talk to someone who has uh, who has imbibed or internalized uh, volunteering and uh, social uh, social uh, social enterprise and helping people change maker sort of things like that uh, it is good and i also i am i am you, your your enthusiasm is very contagious the enthusiasm that you display actually is very contagious so we are very happy about that so i think you will definitely be able to get more people into the ambit and run so what do you think that at, at the same time kerala sort of a place these sort of social enterprises has not been there for in numbers 
which which we see elsewhere in bangalore in delhi etc these sort of enterprise organizations are there in high numbers so what do you think is your, the possibility of uh, uh, the social town take off by another 2 to 3 years time no i'm uh, i'm seeing it as an opportunity to you know uh, this is a second example what a social organization can do and encourage many people to start a social you know uh, venture into social entrepreneurship so uh, you know last two days uh, we were with uh, you know we were working with kerala startup mission we were doing a sustainable development goal innovation boot camp that was first time in kerala can you believe that kerala is you know this sdg index is so high in kerala but this is the first time uh, we are 90% of the participants were new to sustainable development goals world is talking about it but students are not aware of it and in less than 20 hours 10 teams pitched their ideas aligned with sustainable development goals venture that ideas that shows their adaptability that shows their adaptability isn't it yes somebody so, who came without knowing the full form of sdg in yes. in, in 10 hours time is presenting sdg to you as the yes and the adventure idea adventure, yeah, adventure idea, idea aligned idea. with uh, sustainable development goals in 20 hours so what what do you think where will you see uh, the social town be in let's say to number uh, one multi stakeholder platform in the social development sector and there is no other technology platform here which also allows direct and indirect networking there are platforms for volunteers there are platform for ngos there are platforms for uh, you know maybe say as a for companies but i want to bring everyone together i recently gave a ted talk so uh, my thought was i the idea i put forward was do it together so my uh, you know the next collaborate innovate and impact that is the way forward because the problem at hand is Colla- large collaborate yes. innovate and collaborate impact. innovate and impact great great uh see, actually i could easily go for another one hour talking to both of you because your your, your ideas are so interesting uh, you communicate so very well it's so easy to talk to you both uh, shiha as well as you but uh, we have this audience who are normally they come to kmb meeting for about an hour we have actually extended it by about 15 minutes we need to wind up at the same time to the entire audience who are listening to this i have this request you know please do visit the social town website as well as uh, uh, shop dog website because both has an intent of so change making uh you know uh, see just look at it you know she have what he said is so uh, you could come comfortably and led a very very comfortable life uh, in anywhere in the world whether it is australia uh, europe or middle east or anyway he says you know he would like to bring the cost of medications down cost of uh, healthcare down he would like to he would like to see that people don't waste their uh, time and money and efforts going into tertiary and uh, secondary before finding out you know what they what difficulty they they have he has statistics to prove that you know more than 50% of the people actually can be solved by the the primary level of healthcare facility itself but people are very ambitious to see that you know, these days if you have a if you have a problem somewhere on the left side of the chest you straight away go into a cardiologist you will even bypass everybody else you know so that sort of a that sort of a that sort of a living style we live with malus live in there so he has been telling so many things which can actually bring down the cost we can also be making life easier for people so please visit this to website as uh, she have was telling he would love to have so many people who can come in he doesn't take resumes he doesn't actually advertise but you can talk to him and say that i would like to be part of you in this endeavor he is trying to build up a organization which is going to be numero uno in 3 years time and so does our lady ninu rachan okay she have a ninu thank you so very much uh, it, i know that it is not a, it is not a complete conversation that we have concluded but we may meet again inshallah thank you very much i bring you back to our president madhav chandra madhav all yours thank you thank you so much sir and uh, wow what a wonderful conversation i'm sure sir is, uh, is greedy and he wants to go on and on because that's the way the the reactions responses from you as well as from the audience were you know i mean more than 115 people 105 people stayed through have, yes. have you have you seen this yes and and i was just uh, reading all those uh, responses uh, you know to both of them and uh, nino's uh, responses to some of them Uh, you know, it, it was as you rightly said, the enthusiasm and the positivity. Uh, you know, both were very contagious. You know, they have actually made everybody sitting here in this gloomy time very positive and uh, you know forward looking. That is what I would say. And two social entrepreneurs coming in and everyone actually uh, getting charged with that kind of uh, energy and uh, you know the positive outlook which you actually portrayed here. Really, really nice to hear uh, such kind of things. I mean, we can relate many of uh, such things in our lives also, yes, sir. I'm sure both of us, you know. Coming from that kind of a background, also when startup was not in vogue, also we actually started uh, something like that. And uh, you know what you are what you are doing is uh, really really uh, inspiring to the youngsters, especially, and of course not so young crowd also who are present here. You know uh, things are things can be looked from a different angle. In fact, if you look at our uh, 
annual theme of KMA, uh, the spearheading responsible management. You, you are actually proponents of that, I would say. You know, basically, management is all about showing the responsibility and putting more stress on the sustainability part also, the inclusiveness and everything coming in together. And uh, you, you, you know, you talked about being a good student, a good wife, and you know, now becoming a good entrepreneur. You know, you, I'm, I'm putting your words. I didn't say that. You know, you're a good wife or a good student. You said that. So <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure you know you'll definitely uh, become a good. Business. No, no, I mentioned I had it that tag. And I changed that tag to, you know, good, good. Sport, uh, yes, really, something really, more. Really good. And uh, Shihab being the, the real proponent of, uh, I would say, responsible management here today. Uh, thank you so much for uh, bringing out all those facets of uh, your track and track record. And I'm sure there's a long way to go. And uh, you have put in the right, uh, you know, step forward. And uh, definitely it will take you uh, to the destination as desired and wished by all of us, you know, because everybody is sitting here, you know, all those who could actually type in all those comments, they all wish good luck and, you know, uh, Godspeed to each one of you. Wonderful. And we had, you know, even uh, uh, leaders from many other management associations also coming in and putting in, I could see Colonel Achari from uh, PMA, the president, you know, putting a lot of uh, very uh, positive comments and encouraging comments to uh, both of you. And Mr. George Joseph was also there. And similarly, Mr. Shaken Ayer, sir, he, was, he wanted to go in between. He actually put a message saying that I'm leaving, but I think, you know, he was glued back to the screen. So good. <laughs> Wonderful, uh, and thank you so much for that session. Before I hand you over to our uh, Honorary Secretary for the formal vote of thanks, a couple of announcements coming uh, your way. Uh, we have a very, very interesting and timely uh, panel discussion, very relevant panel discussion already lined up. In fact, you, know, you guys actually touched upon that. You know, somebody was, uh, Shihab was talking about traveling yes. from Kasargo to, to Trivandrum. You know, it was, you know, I was smiling, you know, thinking about what is going on right now in our, in our media. In, anyway, uh, a, a panel discussion lined up for 27th January with a very contemporary topic, which says Kerala's developmental conundrum. Notwithstanding who is governing our state, any news of development, especially to do with infra, uh, it's allergic to everyone except the ruling front of that time. This has been going on for decades, be it on infrastructure or on governance. The objective of this panel discussion is to find a way to go forward, setting aside the criticisms and looking at things from a very positive perspective. Nothing to criticize anybody or not to dissect that way, but from a positive perspective for our state and for our nation as a whole. We have a very elite panel being, uh, being identified, which already identified. We have Mr. G. Vijay Raghavan, the founder CEO of our you know, the most successful Technopark, Trivandrum, and the former member of the Kerala State Planning Board, Mr. V. Suresh, the former chairman of HATCO and the founding chair of Forums of Critical Utility Service, a nationwide NGO, and of course, successful Mr. V.K. Matthews, executive chair of IBS, a vociferous proponent of uh, development in Kerala. These are the panelists to share their thoughts, and of course, it's conceived by our own uh, past president, Mr. S. R. Nair, and this discussion is going to be there on 27th January at 6 p.m., so let's see whether we'll be able to travel from Kasargo to Trantum in lesser time for Shihab to make things happen. And of course, we are planning other events also from the MSME forum and other things. We will definitely inform you over WhatsApp, email, and all kinds of uh, notifications. So please tune, uh, play, uh, stay tuned to our announcements and notices so that you can attend all these uh, uh, on the right, at the right time. But now it's time for our Honorary Secretary, Mrs. Uh, Jomon George, a very, very uh, renowned chartered accountant, uh, to deliver the formal vote of thanks. Over to you, Jomon. Thank you. Thank you, President. Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. you are. Yeah, as you said, it's a great evening. Uh, two youngsters in enthralling uh, the entire audience. And both of you should be very happy that uh, more than 50% of the audience are management students. So you as youngsters have really enthralled them, uh, excited them, inspired them. And what we found in common in both of you was passion and purpose. And as SR rightly said, infectious, uh, contagious enthusiasm. And she has but it's not stopping anyway, it's unstoppable. He's talking about uh, making it world's number one uh, uh, med services platform, if I say that, with a billion people on board. All the best to all your plants. Let both your plants take wings, not just wings, wings of fire, as uh, late uh, Abdul Kalam famously, famously said, and blossom forth and gallop forward to be in the service of the people who are in need of medical services and, uh, and you know, the so social uh, connectivity that you're bringing about the volunteering uh, platform, that is all wonderful. And uh, Shihab, uh, the whole, uh, this is, we hear about a lot of uh, uh, platforms where about telemedicine and, and things which we are talking about is bringing the three-tier consulting easier and, you know, uh, the ease of uh, uh, getting medical services. And your, your, uh, 
uh, niche area seemed to be completely different and it was really nice listening to you. Uh, go ahead, all the best from all of us. And as, as I rightly said, um, or, or rather urged us, we will visit the websites and then you know share with our, our, in our, in our groups in KMA as well as our social circles. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, Nino, I think I should uh, uh, start uh, with a compliment, ask me a question. Where the college are you <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, Santur, the president, Santur. <laughs> yeah, President Santur Santur, President talked about you being, and he, he's, you know, going through the trials and tribulations. And uh, I would say, we talk about disruption, you are talking about locating, traveling with your husband's business and all that, and you're chasing your passion. It's a great thing what started because what you've experienced as a volunteer, you feel that can become a big chain of uh, volunteers, uh, not only when disaster strikes, even otherwise for many many uh, good causes like Lakshmi is close to all of us, uh, Lakshmi, the Chekuti, and, and uh, know we know that the kind of uh, passion she brings in. So great evening to, to both of you. I mean, a uh, great evening. We really enjoyed your time. And you can see the chat box. I don't have to say anything more that all of them stayed back. All the, all the participants stayed back and there's no drop in attendance. And that shows that how effective and how captivating your uh, presentations have been. So this is a big thank you from uh, all of us here, I think we have a virtual memento, which will be displayed now and which will, which will be sent to you by post. This is uh, your virtual I mean, uh, presence in, uh, in uh, KMA. And Shia Basi always say this, probably you can show it to your wife as proof for your presence in KMA this evening. This is a real one. This is a hard, this is a, you know, hard made one, not a, not a soft copy. It's only soft copy been shown now. <laughs> this, will be, this will be sent to you soon. And... Uh, this is our very special way of uh, saying thank you and to the president and SR as usual, engage them very effectively. And um, uh, the apology, common apology from all of us is that both of you needed more, more time. And you know, that's how it is. So we'll have more occasions. Stay glued to KMA, become members of the startup for, uh, forum that we have started. We have a lot of things uh, in store for all of you. And so let's continue to say working together. What's that, uh, Nino used a term, working together or? Do it, huh? do, do it together. Do it together. Yeah, that's it. So it let us, uh, that, that is quite uh, catchy and to the it's excellent job as, our, as usual and getting them on board plus, uh, you know, asking all the most relevant questions uh, in the right sequence of things. Big thank you to the secretary for a seamless, uh, uh, we didn't have any glitches today. Uh, thank you, uh, E.D. Jojo, uh, Prajit, all of them, Sandra, all of them there at the secretary. And uh, let us not forget to thank the sponsors, our uh, continuing patrons, uh, Sarah, Medivision, Hale, and Orma Homes. And uh, to the, uh, for the information of the members, the infrastructure work uh, of the building, the KMS building is in fast progress. And we're having a lot of meetings and hopefully before the end of this financial year, we will have, uh, I'm, 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 I think there's something which the president should have said with your permission, president, one, just one word of that. Before the end of this financial year, you see an iconic building, which we're going to say that the world of businesses would meet in Cochin. And that's what we are all working on. So have a great evening. Uh, big thank you to everyone once again. Stay safe, uh, stay calm. Good night. Bye bye. Thank you, Secretary. And thank you, each one of you, once again, for the very attentive audience and the great conversation which we had with these two budding or other you know, blooming entrepreneurs who are there with us today. Thank you so much. Good night. Stay safe. And let us all be 